Welcome, stranger. Have you ever been somewhere you swore was truly magical? And no, sorry, I don't mean Walt Disney World, cough, tourist trap. I'm referring to that special location bordering this plane in the spirit world, where time stands still and the footsteps of our ancestors still echo after thousands of years. There are many magical locations like this, you just have to look in the right places. But don't linger too long, you may find yourself trapped in the living rocks that compose these ancient landmarks. This is the first video in a series where I explore such mystical locales off the beaten path and into the realm of legend. I'll be taking a look at mystical sites throughout Europe and North America, starting with the counties and regions of Great Britain. I'm Johnny from Mortar and Ivy, and this is the top 10 mystical sites in Wiltshire. Wiltshire can be found in England's Southwest Corridor, bordering Dorset, Somerset, Hampshire, Gloucestershire, Berkshire, and Oxfordshire. Its principal towns include Salisbury in the county south, Swindon in the northeast, traditionally of the county but politically its own district, and Trowbridge in the west of central Wiltshire, eight miles southeast of Bath. Wiltshire is especially famous for its accumulation of prehistoric monuments, including barrows, or burial mounds, and standing stone circles known as henges. Some of the more prominent examples are included in this list. Number 10, Old Sarum. Not to be confused with Old Sarah, that friend of a friend who's at every party, Old Sarum is one of the oldest continuously used sites in southwest England. The natural hilltop has included signs of prehistoric settlement from about 3000 BCE, and the surrounding earthworks were constructed around 400 BCE. The site had long existed at the intersection of major Iron Age trade routes that were converted to roads by the occupying Romans. The Normans converted the British fort to a Mott and Bailey castle in the 11th century and added a cathedral. Occupation of the site peaked around this time until the 13th century when a new cathedral was built on the nearby Salisbury Plain and population growth of Old Sarum steadily declined. The long neglected castle was finally sold off by Henry VIII in 1514 and exists as partial ruins today. All that's left of the old cathedral is its foundation, a haunting outline of a once holy place. The site is open to the public and visitors can relax amidst its ruins, taking in breathtaking views of the surrounding plain. The site includes 29 acres of grass chalkland, explorable by many footpaths. Number 9. Membury Camp Membury Camp isn't the sort of camp you'd find RVs filled with filthy-faced children screaming violently and running around with water squirt guns. Any children to camp here are dead. Long dead. On the border of Wiltshire and Berkshire exists about 35 acres of Iron Age Hill Fort known as Membury Fort or Membury Camp. The site, located atop a small plateau, is mostly forested around its outer ditch, and a scenic grove known as Walls Copse occupies its northeast quarter. Pottery and flint artifacts have been found in the area, dating back to the Mesolithic and Neolithic eras, the oldest examples being possibly some 10,000 years old. Number 8. The Westbury Whitehorse Standing on the edge of Branton Downs and near the 2,000-year-old Iron Age Branton Camp Hill Fort is a great white horse figure carved into the chalk hillside. Like many chalk horse carvings that dot the English countryside, origins of the Westbury horse are dubious at best. Some theories suggest a horse figure here existed since the 9th century, though no record indicates its presence before the 17th century. The horse was restored, and I use that term very loosely, in 1778, erasing the evidence of any pre-existing horse figure. Artwork made prior to that date suggests a smaller horse of a different design. The image of the white horse was a popular tool brandished by the ancient Anglo-Saxons, including King Alfred the Great. The Westbury Monument is suggested to commemorate Alfred's victory at the Battle of Ethan Dune in 878, though other sources suggest it was constructed to celebrate the ascension to the British throne by the House of Hanover in 1714, which also used the white horse in its standards. Number 7. Woodhenge Located at the southern end of the much larger Durrington Walls complex exist some concentric rings of small concrete pillars. The pillars themselves are a modern creation, but the landmark dates back to 2500 BCE. They mark the spot where standing timbers once stood, constructed by Neolithic peoples known as the Beaker Culture. While the post hole remains of timbers alone inspires little of the imagination, one must also realize at the site multiple remains of children and youths have been exhumed, their skulls split, indicating likely acts of sacrifice. Woodhenge exists as part of a complex that includes nearby Stonehenge, and the two sites may have been combined in rituals honoring the living and dead, respectively, during equinox and solstice celebrations. 
Recent evidence suggests the site may have been in use as recent as 1800 BCE. While its stone counterparts stand proud to this day, Woodhedge has long since rotted away. After all, exposed wood only lasts a good 15 to 100 years, depending on conditions. If it lasts any longer, you should consult a physician immediately. Oh, that, that was... yeah, let's just forget that joke. Number 6. Seven Barrows There's something idyllic about the Bronze Age Cemetery known as Seven Barrows. What seems like quaint mounds of earth and grass are actually ancient tombs for the remains of Britons dead thousands of years. And don't let the name mislead you. The number of burial mounds in the complex stretching across northeast Wiltshire and western Berkshire actually number from 26 to more than 30 near the village of Upper Lamborn. The barrows ranged in size and shape. The largest mound, known as the Long Barrow, dates to about 4000 BCE. Seven Barrows may be but one of the many sites that inspired J.R.R. Tolkien's haunted Barrow Downs in Lord of the Rings. One barrow excavated revealed the cremated remains of around 100 individuals, dating from about 2200 BCE. And you thought three was a crowd. Number 5. The Alton Parish Complex Possibly the quintessential English country settlement, picturesque Alton Parish seamlessly combines elements of modern, medieval, and ancient Britain. Time does not move or shift here, it simply collects. Consisting of adjoining villages Alton Barnes, Alton Priors, and Honey Street, Alton Parish has one of the highest densities of ancient geographic features per square mile. Some prominent features of the area include, but are not limited to, Adam's Grave, an immense barrow that folklore dictates houses the remains of a giant, Knapp Hill, a prehistoric earthwork settlement adjacent to Adam's Grave, the Ridgeway, an ancient trackway described as Britain's oldest road, the Wandsdyke, or Wodensdyke, a large medieval defensive dish that crosses north of the parish, and the Alton Barnes White Horse, the third largest chalk horse carving in Wiltshire constructed in the early 19th century. Number 4. West Kennet Long Barrow Constructed around 3600 BCE, several hundred years before Stonehenge, the West Kennet Long Barrow was originally used as a tomb for some 46 persons ranging from infants to the elderly who died within 20 to 30 years of each other. The tomb was used in rituals continuously for the next 1,000 years before being filled in with gravel and soil by beaker culture individuals. And to think, I typically grow bored with dead people after a couple of hours. Unlike other barrows of its age and style, the West Kennet Long Barrow exhibits rare sophistication in its craftsmanship. Just down the road from this site, past the River Kennet and a stone line trackway known as the West Kennet Avenue, is the next item on our list. Number 3. The Avebury Complex The largest intact stone circle in Great Britain lies not on the Salisbury Plain, but within the sleepy village of Avebury. That's right, not south of, not just outside, not somewhere near Avebury, smack dab in the middle. Rather than honor the Neolithic stone construct, the village of Avebury incorporated the three concentric rings of stone and earthwork as it grew throughout the Middle Ages. Many of the stones are missing, having been carted off for use in other construction projects. Despite their absence, enough remained to awe visitors at this ancient landmark. Construction of the ditch began in the 3rd millennium BCE, give or take around the same time as Stonehenge, though Avebury is more than four times the size of its more famous cousin to the south. The stone rings and avenue were built subsequently over the next 600 years. Number 2. Silbury Hill Silbury Hill is ranked second on our list of mystical sites in Wiltshire for two reasons. The first reason being, the 5 acre, 40 meter tall hill is entirely man-made, built around 2400 BCE, about the time construction ceased at nearby Avebury, and well before the invention of the bucket and spade. The second reason the hill is so profound is that, at its peak, on a clear day, an observer may view many other surrounding ancient monuments, including West Kennet Avenue, the West Kennet Long Barrow, the East Kennet Long Barrow, the Avery Stone Circle, the Sanctuary Henge, the Ridgeway, the Windmill Hill Neolithic Camp, the Beckhamton Long Stones, the River Kennet, and several illustrious car parks just off the A4. One could save an entire day's worth of sightseeing by climbing the hill with some decent binoculars. And that's what we call mystical, featuring ludicrous. Before we announce our number one mystical site in Wiltshire, let's go over some honorable mentions. Clay Hill. To the west of Warminster is a prominent Iron Age hill fort known as Clay Hill. The site features two bowl barrows and earthen terracing known as lynchets. Legend has it the devil was walking to Devizes carrying a sack of dirt with which he planned to bury the town. 
On his way, he stopped to ask a man for directions. The man remarked he had been walking from Devizes for years. Disheartened by such a long trek, the devil abandoned his plan and dropped the dirt then and there, creating Clay Hill in the process. Hascombe Hill Hascombe Hill is the site of an Iron Age multi-ballot hill fort built in the 1st century BCE, according to 1930s excavations. The fort features six acres of thick wood and steep fortifications. The base of its southeastern slope features an eerie stone circle, erected in, uh, wait a damn minute, the 1990s? Well, that doesn't count, that's cheating. Bloody druids. Martinhenge is the name of the largest ever henge enclosure discovered in Britain to date, situated in the Pusey Vale, halfway between the sites of Stonehenge and Avebury. Excavations have revealed evidence of a timber circle, a stone circle, and an entire preserved Neolithic building. The stones are all removed now, and the site has been horribly damaged by farming. Number one, you guessed it, Stonehenge. Little can be said of Stonehenge that hasn't been said before. It is quite easily the most famous location on this list. The most fascinating fact about the Neolithic landmark is, despite being one of the most studied anthropological objects, very little is known about it to this day. Most pressing, we still know not why or for what it was built. Archaeological evidence suggests building of the ditch and surrounding earthworks began as early as 3000 BCE. We know it was used by the Druids, though it predates their existence. We also know that it lines up with astronomical principles as well as solar movements during the changing of the seasons. But this is but a hint of its intended purpose, and in my opinion, hardly merits the obscene effort to construct it, including transporting some stones from as far away as Wales. It's been the subject of artwork, film, and literature since roaming times, and continues to be one of Great Britain's most popular attractions. Its breathtaking size and expanse continues to lure not only tourists and sightseers, but religious groups who use the site in sacred rituals. Some of the wildest theories of exactly who built Stonehenge range from aliens to giants to the prophet Merlin to the devil himself. Because Stonehenge is such a beautiful enigma that stirs the imagination of millions each year, it is Mortar and Ivy's number one mystical site in Wiltshire. What did you think? Do you agree with our list? Is there something we left out? Let us know in the comments. And tell us your favorite mystical place. We'd love to hear about it. I've been Johnny. You're always welcome in my neck of the woods. Well, I hope you liked that video. Feel free to leave a comment below telling us what you think or would like to see in any future videos. And be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for more great content from Mortar and Ivy, preserving the culture and class of our glorious past.